Uh, next speaker is uh, Nadia Bernardes. She comes from the, well, she speaks from uh, the Federal University of Pernambuco, and she's going to tell us about correlation measures and no Markovianity in open quantum system dynamics. Wait. Um... <laughs> How can I put it on? Shit. Mm -hmm. I cannot see my. <sighs> I think you need to share screen. The share yes. screen might be Is the bottom of the screen. Because I cannot see my Maybe course screen screen. anymore. Wait. Um, how, how is the, the, let me see. Uh, now it's working, thanks, well, great. Um, I cannot share this screen. <laughs> Let me try again. Can you see the share screen button? I can see, but I cannot reach it with the cursor. I don't know what's happening. Do you know how I can, I what is the... Team. Um, I'm gonna ask the tech team. What is maybe just um, oh shit. Wait. Yeah. Oh. You're, you're not in full screen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Is there some, I don't know, maybe I can just press F something and then it will be in full screen. Do you know it? So, sorry, Nadia. Hi, oh. uh, Hork from Tech Team here. So okay. what's, uh, what, why can you not reach the share screen? My, I don't know, my cur I don't see my cursor anymore. Are you in full screen mode now? Mm, no. So you're windowed? Ah, oh, okay. Maybe drag the window. Um, alternative. Alternatively, one of us could put the slides on. Now it's working. Okay. Sorry. Is it working? Yes. We can also change the. If Mercedes is ready, we could change it at some point. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Oh, screen sharing is on. Great. It's working? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yep. <laughs> Sorry for that. Okay. So, Nadia, I think you're ready to start. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Juan, for the introduction. Okay, I'll be presenting here some correlation measure that we defined to witness no Markovian dynamics and this was a work I did together okay I'm from the Federal University in Pernambuco in Brazil and this was a work we did together with uh, the group of Antonio Assin in ICFU in Barcelona but before I really go into the details I want to tell a little little bit about um, okay it's not working <laughs> oh good it's just slow um, okay, what is the framework that I have? I have a system of interest that is in contact with an environment and I cannot isolate this system. And I'm interested to describe how is this system evolving. So if we, how are we going to describe these dynamics? We can think about, okay, initially the system and environment, they are not correlated. And then they are evolving just with a, like with an unitary evolution. And then I trace out the degrees of freedom of the environment, and then I can find how the system is evolving. This is one way of seeing it. Another way of seeing it is that, okay, I have my system, and then I describe this evolution through a map that is taking my state from, I don't know, time zero to time t. And since I want to guarantee that I'm taking density operators to density operators, 
I request this map to be completely positive and trace preserving. So I want to keep op density operators in density operators. So trace preserving, I think it's clear. Um, completely positive, well, if a map is positive, I know if it uh, acts in any positive operator, they will still remain a positive operator. And completely positive, um, it's defining when the extension of the map, uh, this guy here, this, this, this bigger map, is positive, then I call phi completely positive. So good, then I was saying about Markovian and non-Markovian, I want to go a little bit back to the Markovian definition for our classical stochastic process. Imagine you have a random variable x that can assume values xn in time tn. So I say that the dynamics is Markovian if it satisfies this, the probabilities satisfy this conditional, um, this condition here. So if I want to say something about what was the value that x assumes, assumed in time tn, I see here if it, the, the conditional probability satisfied this condition here, then I just need to know what was the probability that they assumed the value x n minus one and then conditional probability. So behind this definition, I see that to tell something about the future evolution, I just need to know the present state. I don't need to know the whole history behind. So one, one common example of a Markovian evolution is just the random walk. So if I'm, I'm like in one position, I just need to know what is the probability to go to the left or to the right. So I don't need to know exactly what happened before the whole history of the walker, okay? And then if this conditional probability does not satisfy uh, this condition here, then I say that I have a non-Markovian um, uh, stochastic process. So I want to recover the same idea for quantum dynamics. And I will define this Markovian or non-Markovianity through the divisibility condition. So I say that the dynamics is Markovian if the map that is taking my uh, system from zero to, a, to T or describing the evolution is just can, be, can be divisible into other maps. And these two guys here, they have to be CPTP. I, I, in fact, I, I'm not really worried about, uh, most of the time I will be talking about uh, trace preserving evolutions. I will be more worried about if it's completely positive or not, these two guys, okay? So again, I'm recovering the same idea. So if I know the state in time S, I know that I can, I can say what is the state in time T. I don't need to tell you what was the state in time zero. So I recovered this idea of future evolution. Uh, it just depends on the present state. So if I need, if this, this my map is, cannot be described, it does, does not fulfill the divisibility condition, then I'm telling you that the dynamics is non-Markovian. So, okay, I know there are some other definitions for non-Markovianity or for Markovianity in, in the market, but here during my talk, I will be talking, when I say Markovianity, I'm thinking about divisibility. Great. So, another thing that we can uh, associate to uh, non-Markovian dynamics is that we see that for some non-Markovian dynamics, we see a recover of information like we have some monotonic, uh, non-monotonic decay of information. This, not, this does not happen with all uh, non-Markovian dynamics, but we know that for some non-Markovian dynamics, we can, we can recover, an example is distinguishability. So I can think about, can you start qubits dynamics? I start with some, prepare my system in some state, I evolve it, and then I prepare with some orthogonal state and I evolve and if I just look to the distance of these two states, I can see that for some dynamics, I will lose uh, the distance and then they will can recover distinguishability. Okay, distinguishability is one on the example. And another example is entanglement. So I have my system that is like in contact with some environment, and then I have uh, it entanglement with some ancilla. And then I can see that, okay, they, I can start with some, then in some maximally entangled state. And then with time, the entanglement will just get uh, smaller and smaller. But at some point, I can see a recover of entanglement. And this will be also a witness of a non Markovian dynamics. Okay? So these are like two examples. We have also some other witnesses. And this is what we are calling this backfall of info information. So it, as we think like, the system is losing information to the environment and at some point it will recover information from the environment. Good, 
So I, I told you that, okay, we have some non Markovian dynamics that they will show um, this backflow of information. But in fact, we know, and this is a, a result from Francesco Buscemi and Milan Giannadatta, that there is indeed an equivalence between divisibility, what I'm calling Markovianity, and monotonic decrease of information classical and quantum stochastic process. So here they are showing that indeed there is a quantity that is always recovered for a non-Markovian dynamics, okay? And the result is based most in this um, theorem here, where I know that a quantum evolution is Markovian if and only if, if I look to the norm one or the trace norm of this, the intermediate map, the extension of the intermediate map acting on a Hermitian operator, the trace norm has always to get smaller or just stay the same, okay? And here we, okay, just to uh, reinforce it, we are just acting already in the, this larger Hilbert space. Which means if I have a non Markovian dynamics, I, need, I have at least one Hermitian operator where I can see an increase in the trace norm. So what they, they, they realized in this paper is that, okay, any Hermitian operator, I can write it as like this, so I can connect to through density operators. And then this theorem can be related to another problem, which is what is the average probability to correctly identify a state extracted from an ensemble of two states, maximized over all possible measurements. So the game is the following. I know I can prepare my system either in row one or row two. I will send you my, this, okay, I will prepare it. I will send you the system. And then with one measurement, you have to guess if I have prepared it in row one or row two. And then what they show is that the best that you can do if you just, okay, you are free to do projective measurements or an element or a POVM. The best guessing probability that you can get is related to the trace norm or to the norm one of the Hermitian operator, okay? So if I know what is the, the Hermitian operator that will give me um, this increase for a non-Markovian dynamics, then I will also see this increase in the guessing probability, okay? Then they are showing, okay, the guessing probability is a quantity that will always show uh, a recover at some point in the time for a non-Markovian dynamics. It's really nice that we know we have a quantity that is always recovered, but we don't know exactly how to construct this uh, ensemble of states. So this is the, the, the method is not constructive. It can be, I know that there is a Hermitian operator, but I don't know how, how to find it. Great. And then another question that when I saw this result was, that was intriguing me is that, okay, we have this guessing probability that we know it will be always recovered, but can we maybe have uh, some correlation measure that we will always recover, always detect a non Markovian dynamics? And I'm already interested, like, can I use really this non Markovian dynamics maybe for some quantum information protocol? And then I thought, okay, the guessing probability, we know that there are some protocols that they will take advantage of recovering the guessing probability, but Maybe we say we have a correlation measure, this, will, this application will be like a more straightforward. And then, okay, we feel we want a correlation measure. We, we just want a measure to fulfill these three requirements. Well, it has to be non-increasing on the local operation. We want like all local operations, they shouldn't uh, create any correlation. We want it to be zero for product states and we want to be, it to be positive or zero. Okay, so these are the only three requirements that we have uh, established for our, our correlation measure. Good, okay, you can already tell me, well, I already have uh, some example for you. Entanglement is some, some correlation measure that fulfill these three requir requirements. That's true. But as I'm, I will try to explain here, entanglement will not, fu uh, it, it fulfills these three requirements, but it will, will not work. So we can think about a non Markovian dynamics that entanglement will not witness uh, or it will, we will not see a recover of entanglement in time. So the dynamics is the following. The first, uh, we can think like during the time zero to S or the time interval uh, between time zero to S, we have some entanglement breaking channel. 
and afterwards we have some positive map. In a way that the whole thing, the product of V and phi, it's completely positive, okay? It's just a physical process. So we start with some entangled state and then we go to a, to a separable state. And since this, the, the, the next step is just a positive map, I will just remain in the separable state. I'm not able to create entanglement anymore. So this is an example where I see that entanglement will not uh, witness no more code unity. Okay, the other suspect would be mutual information. Also fulfill these three requirements that I have established at the beginning. We had already, uh, when we were uh, searching for this measure, we, we had already did, uh, some numerical evidence that mutual information would not detect uh, all known Markov and dynamics. We, we were working with some examples and we were searching for pairs and was, we couldn't find any pair that mutual information could see uh, a recover, uh, where we could see a recover of mutual information. But okay, for numerics, you can always say, oh, maybe we are not searching uh, like in a smart way and blah, blah, or maybe just the volume of states that give this recover of mutual information is just volume zero or something like this. But then we managed to find some analytical example where we could show that mutual information will not um, uh, show this recover. But this is a very non-trivial case, so I'm not going to the details. I'm just informing you that mutual information will not work. But we can go into the details in this like or afterwards of the presentation. Okay, so then we went back to this uh, Buscemi's paper and thought maybe from there, what they told us about this guessing probability, we can get some elements and then we can define our correlation measure in a way that we will always work. So we will just use two elements, two ingredients from Buscemi's paper to define our correlation measure. The first one is this maximally entropic POVMs. So imagine I have you give me then a system with two parties, A and B, and then I will measure in part A in order to prepare part B, okay? So depending on the result, I don't know, result once I'm preparing part B in row B1 and so on, okay? Result N I'm preparing, it's part B in row B N. And then these maximum entropic POVMs are the guys, the, me the, the, the measures that I will do here in a way that the probability of occurring row B1, row B N, they are the same, okay? So each outcome has the same probability of occurrence for when I'm using these maximum entropic POVMs. The other ingredient is I'm going back to this guessing probability and I, I uh, I talked about it, but I haven't defined it. So the guessing probability, imagine you have an ensemble of states. The guessing probability is defined as the average prob probability to correctly identify a state from this ensemble, maximize over all measurements. And then, as I said, if I just have two ensemble of two state, this guessing probability is related to the distinguishability or to the distance of these two states. So I would then define my correlation measuring, combining these two things. So I'm, I have the guessing probability, but I'm maximizing now the guessing probability over all these maximally uh, entropic POVMs. So I want to know what is the ensemble of states that I can create with uh, row A, B, doing a measuring one of the parts, such that the guessing probability is the big, biggest one, okay? And this, this minus one half is just to keep the correlation measure zero when I have just a product state. So this measure is asymmetric. Here I'm just doing a measure on part A, but I want to get to, to make it symmetric. So I'm maximizing over CA or CB, okay? And this does not look really like a correlation measure, but just to give a little bit of the operational meaning of it, what we are doing here, that this correlation measure is, it's, um, kind of giving me a measure of how distinguishable I can do an equiproperable ensemble of state if I just measure one of the parts. Yes, I saw it's 20, thanks. So I think like if I just go to a product state, this is clear how, the, how this is measuring, like how this is zero. So if I just, have a product state and I'm measuring part A, I can see that all the states that I'm preparing part B, they will all, all be row B. So there isn't anything you can do, like if I prepare here my system, 
to tell me if it was row B1 or row B2 because they are just the same. So then the guessing probability, the best that I can do is just randomly uh, say, okay, it was one or two, we just guess, randomly guess. And then I see that my correlation measure is just one half minus one half is just zero. Okay, and if I go to the maximum entangled state, I haven't um, wrote it here, but it's, it's easy to see that for the maximum entangled state, my guessing probability is just one. And then I have the correlation measure one half, which is the maximum value. And also, but here there's some important thing that I don't see any difference between a maximally entangled or a maximally classically correlated. It's just, they will give me the same value one half. And also we are able to show that this correlation measure is no increase in the local operations. Okay, it's a correlation measure. And, but I, I won't show this here. Okay, then I'm just telling you the correlation measure that we have, it works as a correlation measure. But what I want to convince you, what I think it's the most interesting part of this work is that I know how to construct this ensemble of states in order to see this correlation measure, or, or to see this backflow of information with this correlation measure. And what we were exploring this result uh, from Bogna, Marcos and Tony is that they showed, if you give me a non Markovian dynamics, they show how to construct uh, states using some ancillary um, part in order to see always an increase in the distinguishability. So they, what they show here, uh, of course, uh, there is some detail here. They are just showing this for bijective uh, dynamics. But they show how to construct these two guys. I'm not going into the details of this uh, work. I just want you to keep in mind that these green guys are the ones that we know to construct in order to see this increase in the trace norm. So then what we will do, we will just consider, okay, I, had, I was explaining we have, we have two parts. This B part I will divide now into other parts. So I have the ancillary system that I need to see this recover of um, in the trace norm. And then I will do some measurement in the A part in order to prepare this B part. So I'm considering starting a state of AS and A prime in this way. So the A part is, we can say that is a, like a flat state. If I have zero, I'm preparing then as A prime in row. And if I have one, I'm preparing in row prime. So I'm then doing measuring some element of these POVMs, uh, these two guys here, and then preparing this uh, S and A prime in row one or row two, okay? So here I have already, I, ha I have still some freedom of uh, eta and lambda. Okay, if I just calculate the correlation, so these are the guys that I have prepared. This is the ensemble. These are these two states that I can prepare uh, my system. If I just calculate the correlation measure, I see uh, you, you just calculate the guessing probability. Then I see that they are equal so they are related to the descent of these two states. And at the end, what I have is that I have them related to this, um, to the descent of these two guys, and I have to maximize it. So I have to maximize this lambda or eta, so I can just choose them, one of them to be uh, one and the other zero. So at the end, the correlation measure is just equal, um, okay, proportional to, this, to the descent of these two guys. And I told you already, keep in mind the green guys are the ones that you know you will see an increase in the distance in time between them. So if I say an increase in distance between um, here, this means that the correlation also is getting higher at some point, okay? So then what we, we just concluding, well, I have um, commented that entanglement and mutual information, they fail to witness all non Markovian dynamics. So we proposed a new correlation measure I hope I have convinced you that this is really a correlation measure. So I'm, I haven't showed you, but you can go into the paper and see the details that, okay, I don't see any, um, they don't increase for, they are non-increasing for local operations. And I have described the states, or I have mentioned that I can construct states in a way that I always see this recovering correlation in the correlation measure. Okay, thank you. I don't hear you. Juani, uh, I don't hear you. Um, oh. You don't hear me? I'm unmuted yeah. now. 
thank you, Nadia, for the talk. I'm sorry again for the technical inconveniences. Uh, we have agreed to start the next talk at 20. So we have time for questions, people. You can submit them through Slido. Meanwhile, I will ask Nadia a can ask Nadia can I ask a question. Um, yes. Your new measure. In practice, I, I assume it must be hard to compute efficiently. Have you tried it? Uh, what can you say about the efficiency of computing the measure on some channels? Yeah, we, we tried, yes, it's true, because we have still to maximize over all these this, this POVMs. Yeah, this is the, the, the hard part. We do, I, don't, I don't have an efficient way to compute it. Yeah, it's not supposed to be efficient, but yeah. Uh, in practice, where can you um, obtain values for your measure? Um, can you, could you consider, which examples did you look at? No, uh, ah, the only constraint that I have for my correlation measure, I don't know if I understood the question correctly, but the only constraint is that I need this bijective, uh, it, the, 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 the dynamics has to be bijective. Because at the end, I'm exploring this. So I will just, I know that this correlation measure is related to, to the descent of these this, uh, two guys. So if I just have a bijective, um, then I don't, I don't really have to worry about anything about the, the, the POVMs because I already know how to construct them, okay? If it's bijective, it's straightforward. I just have to calculate this distance. But if it's non-bijective, then it's not, it's hard because then I don't know how to do it. I know that I have this correlation measure and it will work, but it's not like I, I will have to search through like, I don't know how I, exactly how to find this field the ends. Um, we don't have uh, questions now. Um, okay. So maybe we can finish a bit earlier. <laughs> okay. So thank you, Nadia, again. Thank you.